Okay, so on a most basic level, um, WordPress is a content management system. And what that means is it has the ability for you to log in and update information and save it to a database where it's always there for you to go back and see it. So um, when we begin the process of working on any kind of WordPress site, on a most basic level, you have to have, there's, so here's a dashboard. And the dashboard is pretty much the area where all of your content's at. It's a user-friendly interface that you can log in and edit your posts and pages, right? Everybody with me there? And just like be like, I'm not with you, I'm lost if you are lost, or don't. So what this is, is this an example of a theme that it's free, and the theme is pretty much like a miniature free website, right? And there is a spot that you can add and change different themes. So this is a default one that WordPress pretty much just gives you. It's already designed, looks good, it's browser friendly. And what I did is I made a few different pages. So for example, home, pretty straightforward. I didn't design this, so don't judge the design. Page with sidebar. So you'll see, you know, a post, and here's a sidebar over here, archives. For those of you that are using Twitter, Twitter sidebar, contact form. you know, with name and stuff, you can fill this out. This is a pretty common one. Most every time you go somewhere, you see, you know, contact form you can fill out for more information and so on and so forth. That's not a plugin? That's it is a plugin. That is a plugin. Yep. And so that's actually like, we'll go through the dashboard in more detail. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time like on the front end because I assume that most everyone, like WordPress sites, they can look, you would never know for the most part. I mean, there's some sites that you can kind of look at and you know, you've maybe seen the theme before. So you're like, oh, that's a WordPress site. You can just kind of tell, um, you know, it depends on how you use them. At Grain and Mortar, you know, the, the studio that we work at, um, you know, we develop marketing sites with them. So, you know, anything from, you know, salons to, you know, um, I don't even know what's our, you know, health and fitness websites. I mean, blogs, more blog oriented, one page websites, event websites, it's all kinds of different stuff. So, you know, the, the front can be all kinds of stuff, but the back always is gonna look the same no matter what. Can you guys see this? My head's on the way. Okay. So. All right. So when you log on, by default, it takes you to this dashboard and it's kind of like a quick view. And what you'll see, you know, there's this little box here. It's called the right now box. And it'll just kind of give you an overview. You can see like, there's nothing really on this site because I didn't add anything yet to it. You know, so it'll tell you how many posts there is, you know, pages, categories, comments. Um, over on the side, I added a couple other bells and whistles like you can add a custom portfolio section. So say for example, you wanted to have news and you are a photographer, but you also wanted to have a custom section that you could put your photos in, right? You can add that custom to the dashboard. You know, it's a little more advanced stuff. There's, there's also probably plugins that will, you know, kind of do that for you. So in other words, on your site, you could have one section where there's news and one section where there's, you know, photos, something like that. Is the sidebar thing like post portfolio, is that de default, that's like WordPress standard? Or right. would you add anything to that sidebar? The only thing that's added is portfolio. Okay. And that was kind of, I was going to be like, here's, you know, the one step farther you can take it if you want to. Plus I figure that most people are, are generally like, you know, most people are generally wanting to do more than just, you know, just the blog, right? Which is kind of what it's set up for. So, and the, also the other time you'll see is that a lot of times the sidebar will change if you add a plugin and not to keep deviating, but a plugin or additions, right? Or modules, uh, bells and whistles, whatever you want to call it. You know, a plugin could be for example, in this case, a plugin is the contact form. So when I added the plugin to the dashboard, you'll see over on the left side that I get a little box that pops up that says forms. That's not gonna be there out of the box, right? Because it's an addition. But for the most part, everything that you see over here 
is going to be out of the box. The biggest, the, the way we try and explain it, we do a lot of you know training. We have to explain to clients, you know, sort of what WordPress is and, and you know how you navigate it and what it means. The easiest way that I say to break it up is there's posts and there's pages, and pages tend to be things like about or hours or you know um, our prices, things like that. A posts, you know, tend to be more like news posts, you know, or it might be a company news section. And pages are usually just one simple page with a, you know, any array of information. It can be a mix of pictures and such. Where you'll see posts, it's a little more obvious because it'll, it'll be like the, the title and then, you know, the date might be underneath it and then it'll usually be like an excerpt, you know, in other words, the first, you know, say 30 words of the news story. And then it'll say read more or something like that. And you know, there'll be 50 or 100 of them sometimes in a row. And you know, say next, previous, pretty much looks just like you know, Omaha.com or something like that. You know? So that's pretty much the main difference. So a lot of times we'll find that we're building a site, we're, we're only needing one or the other. You know, we might have a client that's like, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna update news, so I don't you know, care about the news. Cool, fine, just don't use it. And, and it's nice because the, you know, the, the actual website only pulls in the information that you want to. So this is kind of where themes come in, is a theme is what is going to connect the dashboard and what's on the dashboard to what's being displayed on the site. So you could have a theme that only uses pages, right? And, um, but on the dashboard, you'd, it'd still say posts there. You know, it's not going to go away. And so it's pretty much just kind of like a reserve, you know, tank or something like that. You know, and the same thing, well, if you're not using... Um, another option like that would be comments, right? So it's, you know, it's pretty you know, common to have, if you have news posts that you would you know, allow users the ability to comment on those news posts. But with our, in our case, for a lot, of, you know, a lot of times you're not gonna have like, if you had an hours page or a services page, well, you wouldn't want customers to comment on that. Like that doesn't really make sense. Great hours, awesome job, you know, <laughs> you know, not gonna happen. So, you know, it can, you know, it, that is the flexibility's there. You know, and honestly, like that's one of the trickiest things kind of about WordPress is it's, it's really hard even for me to kind of give you like an overview because it does so much. You know, people are like, well, can it do this? Yes. Well, let's talk about how that works. So I'm just trying to give you the kind of quick and dirty, um, you know, and as far as flexibility, you know, you know, some of you guys that weren't here last time, I mean, we, I, brought, I brought up a couple of sites, you know, at least that we, we've done, and, and I can show you a couple other example sites, you know, but I thought we should just focus on this for now. You guys can search sites on WordPress on your own all day long. Um, but it ranges anywhere from news sites, like I said, to just, you know, a plain old one page site. So it really just depends on what you want to do with it. So getting back to the sidebar sort of, um, you know, posts, and then you'll see portfolio. Normally that's not there. Uh, media. Of course, you're, you know, a, a pretty big thing is going to be, you know, videos and images, right? You know, everyone wants to, you know, put a, a photo of their cat on their website, you know, um, that's fun. And so what you have to have is you have to have sort of, again, what I ca would call a reserve tank. And we'll, we'll click on these and kind of go through them quick, but I'm just going to give the overview. A reserve tank to hold all those photos. So I could say I want to add 10 photos of Mike's cat, you know, to my reserve tank. And then I could go through the site and populate the site with my cat photos, right? Oh, I want to put one on the post page. I want to put, you know, one on, you know, the about page. I want to put, you know, one on the hours page since I got comments that my hours are awesome. And yeah, so media, that's what media is. You know, that makes sense logically. Forms, um, pages, really the, the most important stuff you'll see like when you're on a dashboard is, is, on, the, is on the top left-hand corner. You know, which is the posts, pages, media, you know, comments. And then as you get down here, this has more to do with the settings of WordPress. So for example, you'll see the little plugin section, tools, users, you know, this is where, you know, users, you know, you can add more users, um, appearance, change the theme, settings will be general stuff, just, you know, um, what's the time, like what, you know, are you in central standard time or, you know, or whatever the case is, what's the the title of your blog, you know, things like that. Um, and then I also have a couple more bells and whistles. Another one you'll see that I have on here is, um, th I just put this on, you know, cause it's one of our recommendations is it's back WP up, which it's a backup plugin. I think that <laughs> pretty much one of the first things we do as soon as we set up any site to any capacity is like get some sort of backup in place. In other words, especially if you're, you know, 
finagling it and adding various plugins and stuff, a lot of times um, there's a lot of great features out there and there's a lot of great developers, but sometimes they make shoddy plugins and you, you might add a plugin and then your whole blog might go to crap and then, then where you're at. So, um, so definitely some sort of backup. Again, you could go to the plugins, you know, section and search for. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, and it's the one that we like the best. And it gives you multiple options, you know, anywhere from, at least this one gives you multiple options anywhere from being able to <laughs> back up to your desktop to, you know, you could, it emails a copy to yourself. You can use Dropbox. Um, you know, we use Amazon, you know, for ours most of the time. It lets you either back up the whole site in one shot, which is great. The only downside is sometimes it will get such a huge file size mm -hmm. that it takes like 20 minutes, you know, which if you're impatient like me. So what I do is um, the way we do our backups is we back up the database as its own piece. Since, uh, you know, the website is sort of separated into the database, which is, you know, kind of what holds your content. And then the theme, which is your plugins and your images and all that type of stuff. And then we do that independently. Um, Again, like so, has what, like but I mean, there's other loadings. plugins that just do it all in one shot, you know. And also, like, if you're going to have an issue, and you know, like if you've been hacked like or something, a, a lot of times... <laughs> Of it's not everything in the theme. that WordPress can do, and also you know, the like problem's not to. in the theme. Like so they, they, the they theme, have a lot of pre-written, right? You so know, you can just you know, go back code and say, and, okay, well, you know, it'll tell you. Know, it okay, if you want to sort, before, if you wanted you can your posts to all be sorted by, you know, category and not by date, for example, and be much more time intensive. It makes sense logically that they would be sorted by, you know, the newest date first, right? Um, okay, because you like want to see the newest news. But maybe, you, for example, you wanted to have, you know, so we well, I want to see all of author A, the previous one, and then right? all of author so you B, have one and one from every single day. So in other words, definitely if you broke that, the site, you can sort it. You can get it from the day before, techniques. but we also do it once um, a month. And that's kind of where the power of so like that it being in case for some reason, one of those seven you know, days really you know, effectively what you're doing is you're going to say, okay, well, you know, and there's, I mean, you know, depending on what you're, and it's just WordPress, it's not that big of a deal. If you had some elaborate, this banking, you know, application, of course, so you would need much more complex, you know, backups and security and for it. But, you know, I mean, if it's just a blog, it's, go and go and go you know, and, go. I mean, and, and that's always served us well. I mean, every time that we've ever had a problem, we've been able to recoup, you know, any issues, you know, just with that. Um, it's one of those things that the first time you lose all your stuff <laughs> or something happens, you'll be like, I remember when that guy was barking about backing up. Should have done it. All right. So let's go into posts and pages. Does that sound good? Okay. So this is the, the post section. I mean, the good thing is that WordPress, they, one of the reasons that we like it and the reasons that I think it's so successful is that, that the interface, you know, the dashboard is, is easy to use and, it, and, you know, it's intuitive. And also, you know, when you go different places in the site, um, you know, it looks the same for the most part. So you kind of got to pay attention to where you're at. So like up here, I can obviously see I'm on posts and there's up, you know, at the top, you know, usually any of your options for sorting and things like that are going to be up here. So this one, of course, only has one fake post, you know, that we have normally you would see, you know, as many posts as you had, you know, sort of listed down. Um, a lot of times they're ordered in date order, which you can see over here. Um, it'll show you how many comments there is, if it's categorized who the author is, that sort of thing. It is really hard to understand the codex if you're not like a designer. And even for, you know, for me still, you know, but it'll, you know, it's, it's kind of like, well, this is, you know, it's WordPress's authors. Like they're the ones that wrote it. So it's kind of like the, you know, the end all, but it's oftentimes like too complicated to just read through it unless you're a developer and go like, oh, okay, I get it, you know. So, I mean, there is, I was gonna give a couple of examples at the end of different websites that are kind of like that. Um, CSS Tricks is probably like one of the big ones. Um, there's a guy named Chris Coyer, and he writes not just about WordPress, but he writes about like HTML, and, and he, he just, he really has a way about like simplifying it, you know, he's very like, you know, layman about it, you know, he's just, it's not way over your head. I mean, I've always been able to clearly understand his, and you know, I've, you know, we've heard, you know, good results from people like learning off of that. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll pull up the list at the end. Um, and another one is there's even some sites out there that, you know, have like snippets, I call them, which a snippet is just like a small bit of code, like, you know, and it'll tell you where to like grab this and put it in your theme. And this will sort your posts by author, right? You know, and it, and it versus like kind of, you know, ciphering through the codex and just, 
trying to figure it out. And, you know, a lot of times they don't give you an exact answer. That's the problem in the codex. They're, they're, they're saying like, here's what it does. And then here's the 800 options that can possibly happen, but they don't go, oh, here's the example. So that's kind of what, you know, what they're saying why it's better is that a lot of times you'll be able to Google and find a real world example. Like, you know, here's where I did this, here's the code, you know. And again, one more reason for those of you that are either deciding if you want to use it or whatever the case is, I mean, um, is that the nice thing is because it's the most popular and downloaded content management system in the world at this point. I mean, there, it, anytime you've had a problem, unless you're like super advanced, somebody else has had that problem and solved it 10 times over, you know? And a lot of times the, the only way that I was able to learn and, you know, just like Michael and the rest of us is like, you know, you pretty much just keep Googling around and, you know, it sounds really weird, but I mean, it, it, it's probably one of the best ways to learn and instead of, you know, going through WordPress's, you know, sort of haywire experience. Yeah, never, you know, yeah no, that's great. That's a good question. So there's, there's two different ways. The, the most, Easiest way is the nice thing about um, WordPress is you can do it from this dashboard. So say if you were looking for a contact form, so let's see if I can, hopefully my, this is usually when stuff stops working where I'm like, watch how easy it is, it doesn't work. Um, so all I did is you'll see I went down the sidebar here and I went to plugins, right? Which is, can you see that? Cool. So, and then here is, for example, a list of the plugins that I have currently installed. And it's, you know, it tells what they are. Obviously it's active because my option is deactivate it or edit it, which I wouldn't want to edit it. Um, and then sort of tells you what it is, what version it is, who the author is. I can even visit the plugin site. You know, so it pretty much is just giving you like a little breakdown of what you have. So here's my backup one, for example. Doesn't really say much, just backs up. Um, Gravity Forms, that's the form one I was using. And from here, if I already had some in the hopper, I could, you know, I can say I can turn them off, right? So then here's my plugins. You'll see it's a little grayed out. Maybe, you, yeah, you probably can't see that now. But it also says active. So in other words, it's deactive if you want to activate it. So, um, so back over again, pretty much always the default is just go to the sidebar. Like if you're looking for something, go to the sidebar. So if I was going to add a new one, I could go add new and then it's actually kind of nice because they have a little interface that's already here um, like featured plugins, popular ones, the newest ones, favorites. Um, <laughs> there is also a rating system that comes along with plugins. So a lot of times before you go plugin adding happy, it's nice to see, you know, a lot of times it's a star system. So if this is like one star, it probably sucks, you know. I mean, I try and search for plugins and only add plugins that are at least three stars or above. Like, honestly, it's not that hard to, it's pretty hard to get a five star one, but you know, those are usually the ones that are the best quality, you know, meaning they're easiest to use and they're also like written well, coded well, so they're not gonna break your site, but you never know. So um, as a general rule, what I would say is if you add a plugin, like go to your site and like look at it and make sure your site didn't break. Because if you get plugin happy and you say, you go in there, you add five or six plugins, and then you go to your site and something's not working for some reason, you're gonna be going back through it again. So whenever we add stuff, even if it's the tried and true ones that we always use, we'll kind of add the plugin and then jump back, look at the site. Okay, it's cool, you know, it's a little bit of a game of risk, you know. And if it does break it, then you just can deactivate it. It's usually not that big of a deal. Okay, so like, Jetpack is, yeah, this is one actually a lot of times, and what you'll see is depending on like, say you get set up on a host, you know, when you know you get what I was talking about earlier, like the one click install, the default, a lot of times they'll have some plugins already added. You know, most of the time they're like spam battling ones, you know, like you were talking about, like there might be a contact form one. Um, Jetpack is usually one of them. It's made from WordPress, so it's always, you know, legit. You'll notice again, it's got four stars, so that's good. Um, so let's give it, Give it hell. So I install it, try to install it, it says, are you sure? So yeah. And it's gonna do the thing. Hooray. Okay. So that was it. So it, what it does is it goes out to WordPress's little reservoir. It grabs a copy of that plugin and it puts it on your site. So again, this is why it's important that, you know, you try and stick with the good ones because Although they are monitored from WordPress, you know, you 
don't want to be putting a bunch of junk on your site. And also, we should probably caution that um, while they are great for adding enhancements, if you get too many plugins, if you have 50 plugins, your site's probably going to be super slow, you know? So, I mean, it ends up being, you know, sort of a, a decision of, you know, if, you know, this is the difference between do you hard code it? And, you know, in other words, meaning can you do it in the theme or should you Google around and try and find that little excerpt or should you use plugins? You know, we try and at least for us, we try and have a general practice of we don't use any more than 10 plugins. Um, just because in my experience, it sends that as you get more than that, it tends to slow the sites down, especially if they're plugins that are on the front side of the site heavy, meaning it's like contact forms and share features or something like that. Um, so um, it pretty much says, okay, do you want to, you know, it did its thing. If it failed or if it didn't work, it's going to let you know. So all I did is go back to my plugins again. And if I scroll down, I'll see there's my Jetpack, right? That's the one I just installed. And then I can activate it. So that's a good, so that's a good point. So let's talk about that for a second. So for those of you guys who don't know, there's, it gets complicated because what WordPress.com is the WordPress hosted and .org is self-hosted. So WordPress is open source software, meaning that it's available for you to download the whole thing, like the package, like the guts, the whole thing, and take it and put it on your own personal server, right? Or GoDaddy's or whatever, and do what you want. Um, that is called the self-hosted, meaning that you host it yourself. You're in charge of it. They're like, okay, here you go, cool. That's what this is. That's what you're looking at. That's what most, I don't know, I would say that's probably the, what most people at this point, you know, are doing and want to do. The other option would be what I call WordPress hosted. And you'll be able to tell because the URL will say like, what is it? Such and such dot WordPress. Is that how the URLs broke yeah. down now? Yeah, I can't remember. Unless so, them. yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. So if you've ever seen one, it's, you know, I'll just keep picking on the cats, but you know, Joe's cat blog dot WordPress, you know, dot com. And so from that standpoint, what they're doing, the benefit to that is that they're taking care of some of the maintenance for you. And they're, you know, they're, you don't have to worry about, you know, updating to the newest version of WordPress. You don't have to worry about updating your plugins, but you're also limited in what you can do to some degree. And then mostly is because they figure that if you need this, you know, their hosted option, it's because, you know, you, you need a little more help or, or you just don't want to deal with it. Like same thing. Free. Right. It's free. But the, the other one is also free unless well, no, but you, you don't want to, unless you, you, you have to pay for hosting. hosting. So right. Exactly. But to, to have the software, at least it's, yeah. it's free. Right. Yeah. It just, I mean, it probably just, you know, depends on your, what you want, you know, what you want to do with it. I mean, it really just, you know, we, ours tend to be more for commercial use, I guess you could say which is what's nice because, again, yeah, with the exception of paying for hosting, it, you know, it's free and most of the plugins are free. But, you know, and then you can get into, you know, there is, you know, various paid things from the, you know, from the themes. In other words, you know, the front side of what it looks like, you can buy, there's extremely expensive themes, you know, um, to paid plugins. So, for example, if you're not happy with the default contact form that comes with WordPress and you're like, okay, I want to be able to do more, that's where something like the Gravity Forms plugin that I was talking about would come in is they're like, great, we'll sell you one that's awesome, but it's a hundred bucks. You know, when you do purchase any kind of premium theme or plugin, you're going to get support with it. In other words, there's usually a forum or there's like a dedicated person or some sort of chat line or a phone number that you can call and be like, okay, I put the plugin on and it's not working. <laughs> it's too thorough documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Much more thorough documentation versus, you know, these free plugins, again, you know, they, you know, you might be able to get a hold of the guy that, you know, is doing it. And a lot of times, you know, they, they will be pretty good about, you know, kind of watching to see if anyone has questions, but you, you kind of got to fend for yourself, you know, a lot more than with a premium plugin. I mean, most of the time, you know, with gravity forms, like they're back within a couple of hours, like, you know, and I'm yet to have a time where they couldn't diagnose something for me and nine times out of 10, it's cause I messed something up. So there's that. Yeah. So, I mean, look, as for example, like, I mean, this is, you know, now we're starting to get into sort of like, you can see how this field and just this topic WordPress alone gets, just gets massive as it is. Um, you know, for example, 
a lot of people have great success and most people run their blog off of a theme that's already out there. It's free. It didn't cost them anything, right? They can kind of add what they want to it. Um, you know, where, uh, you know, businesses, you know, so like what we do as a company, you know, what Drew does, what, you know, some of the rest of us do is like companies might come to us and they're like, okay, I want my site to be on WordPress so I can use the power of the dashboard and all these other features, but I want the theme can't be a theme from WordPress, right? Because, you know, you know, so-and-so, you know, Bob's, you know, business isn't going to want, he wants it to be custom. So that's where more advanced knowledge comes in that we're kind of talking about. That's where the codex comes in. That's where more premium plugins comes in because we're building them from scratch, right? So we have to know what everything is about them from top to bottom, how it, you know, and, you, and we have to understand how it connects to the dashboard and how it calls and how you change the order and all that type of stuff. So this is where it really just depends on what you want to do with it, you know? I mean, is this, you know, commercial or is it, you know, a big scale type of situation or is it, you know, like I said, like just a home blog that you don't care about? Well then, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a lot of times they're royalty free images and, and these guys, I mean, they just, they just sit out here and, and code these, you know, sites together, and I mean, I mean, you know, I'm a little more picky probably because, of course, I'm a graphic designer. But um, you know, to the average person, they're going to look at it and they're going, "Oh, it looks great, sure." You know, like I'll look at your cat photos. You know, what we're talking about is by default when I go to um, my homepage. So this is the homepage, right? I can tell. So if I click on the logo, this would be like if it was you know website.com. Is you have the ability? To, what if you were like you know to to say okay, well, this is the home page now, but I want the page with sidebar to be my home page. That's what we're talking about, right? I want the pine cone to show up on the front. I don't know if that'll actually happen. So under settings in the back, um, you'll notice that it says front page, which in other words is the home page. I can pick a different one if I want to. I don't know if this is actually gonna work. Also, when you first start a theme, it defaults to um, the front page being a post. Depends on the theme. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a lot it, of times. So a lot of yeah. times people are like, why is, yeah, so then you just need to see where it says your latest posts. Oh, Oops, sorry. I was going to see if it actually worked. <coughs> he has a setting on static page, and that's what you want to do. And then you can yeah. set whatever home page to, as your static page. So you, yeah, so then you can see what, it did work. It switched from, it used to be a different, you know, setup on the home page. And you'll see now that my sidebar, which was on a previous page, is showing up on the home page. Changed a little bit of styling, that's a whole other topic, but you know, it changed what it was. So um, the other one would be, you know, posts, which is um, and there is sometimes where this <laughs> again, so many variations, depending on the theme, you might, you know, pick a different page for posts and it still might not do what you want it to. Um, so that's kind of where usually what will happen is a better theme. You know, a lot of times um, the theme that tends to always work is what the 20, they do a theme every year. WordPress kind of does one. 20, yeah, 2011, 2010. So, you know, 2012, I'm sure. I don't know when the 2013 will come out. And that, that theme is very robust, meaning that for the most part, if you change settings on the dashboard like we're doing here, it's going to respond and do what it's supposed to. You know, another theme that's that you just go and find, you might change some settings and it's not that it's wrong. I mean, it could be error free like Drew's talking about, but it might not have all the bells and whistles <laughs> built into it. So it not, might not respond as well. Um, what was the other thing that we we're going to change? That WYSIWYG. Oh, WYSIWYG, yeah. Right Don't even forget about that WYSIWYG. Mm. All right, so appearance. Uh, sort of makes logical sense. What's the appearance of the site is what they're talking about. So you'll see here I have themes and widgets. We won't necessarily get into that. But if I go to themes, this is another, you know, this is what we've been talking about this whole time, is from here again, just like with the plugins, I can change and or add new themes or see what I'm working with right now. So what this is telling me is my current theme is 2011. So pretty much like I was talking about. So it is you know, a good one. It kind of talks about what it does and so on and so forth, what version it is, who made it. And then I'll, usually this is just a little quick image and it just shows, it's just an image. So it just shows in, out of the box, this is what it's gonna look like. So if you change it, it might look different. Mine's got a pine cone now. 
Um, so then what I have here is, so it's showing me my current theme and then it's showing me, these are other themes that, and I think and like in this case, it just came on there already. Like I didn't go get these or anything. Um, so, you know, there's 2010 and there's a couple other ones. So in other words, say if I was like, okay, well, the one I have, I don't like it. Let's try this other one. So we'll do it and see what happens. Chaos. Okay. So that's a good one too. Okay. So see what happened. So in other words, you know, in my little repository, I have these different themes. So now um, all kinds of different stuff can happen, you know. Um, it obviously looks different. You know, the images aren't on here. So really a lot of times the theme is the difference between styling is the biggest one, you know, look visually different. Of course, this one has blue all over it. Other things could be maybe this theme has t three sidebars or two sidebars. And the previous one I had only had one sidebar, you know. So that will be the differences between themes most of the time. And so that would, you know, be reasons why you would pick one over another, you know. Of course, you can customize them, you know, to some degree. Um, and this is where you get into, you know, if you were using a plugin, for example, a lot of times when you jump back and forth from themes, it doesn't, it's not going to affect it, right? Because it's going to know, well, you had the plugin activated on the last theme, so you want to activate it here too. But if you start getting into custom code, like we were talking about, like if you add your own little snippet, you know, to the home page, when you switch themes, that's gone, right? Because it's a whole different theme now. So, right. It's still there. You can switch back to that. Right. Cool. Um, I mean, other than that, so pretty much if you guys, if anyone wants to like hang around and, you know, talk in more depth or ask questions about this, like I said, I'm happy to hang around. But for anyone that wants to go or needs to go at seven, uh, by all means. But thanks for coming. Thanks. For anyone that is leaving. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah.